Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. I'm very excited today because I'm bringing you a history vlog and I haven't done one in ages. In fact, last did one in April, so it's been quite a long time. So I'm gonna take you back to the late 1800s and to a very Victorian London where the streets were a hive of activity, like they were bustling with people dashing around. There were street sellers shouting at the top of their voices and there were horses pounding the cobbles. In 1984, the Times put out an article predicting that in the next 50 years, London was going to be buried under nine foot of horse manure because there were so many horses on the streets that they could not keep up with the quantity of muck that was being deposited. Also, this wasn't a problem just for London. This was a problem for the cities up and down the UK and even cities abroad like New York. There were four ways the Victorians got around in the late 1800s. By ship, if you were going abroad, by train, if you were traveling further distance in the UK, and on foot, if you were just going somewhere quickly. Other than that, it was all horsepower that got you from A to B. On the London streets, you would have come across cabs, coaches, carriages, trams, omnibuses, and goods carts being pulled by horses every single day. It's estimated that 50,000 horses work the London streets every single day. And the likelihood is it was a lot more than that because that doesn't include pleasure horses that were going for a ride in Hyde Park or private carriages and coaches. That is a lot of horses. I genuinely struggled to get my head around imagining that many horses on the street of London every day. My three horses at home make enough of a mess and it's just three of them like if you're a horse owner i can guarantee you've gone into the stable on many occasions looked at the mess they've made and gone how can you produce so much muck like my muck heap fills up so quickly and i've just got three we're talking about 50 plus thousand every day going up and down the streets i mean you start i mean it's not comprehensible like you can't imagine it but you can understand why the streets were covered in horse muck. So as if horse muck on the streets wasn't bad enough, horses obviously had to pee as well. So they would literally just go in the streets. So you had the mixture of horse muck and horse urine. Now, if you own a horse, you'll know that horse pee absolutely stinks. Like, even if it's just been in the stable for a couple of hours, it reeks. So imagine it just being left on the street, especially like on a hot day or something. It obviously attracted a lot of flies. And flies are what really carried diseases like typhoid around. So, you know, pretty much all this muck and pee was killing the Londoners, it was poisoning them. And still that's not the, <laughs> it's not the worst of it either. They would leave the horse carcasses on the side of the road for quite some time before being collected. Now, accidents happened a lot. Horses did not have long life expectancies back then, especially the horses that worked particularly hard, like the omnibus horses and the handsome cab horses like if they made it to their eighth birthday they've done really well in life so often horses would simply just collapse in the road or there would be carriage accidents and horses would have to be destroyed and they simply left them to the side of the road now the reason they didn't pick up the horses straight away is they left them to putrefy and then it made it easier to remove them now i won't tell you how they remove them because it's absolutely disgusting but so you've got manure horse pee and rotting horse carcasses all on the street. And I saw this horrible photo, I'm not gonna put it up because it's really grim, of some children playing on the side of the street. They're like sat on the bit of the curb and next to them is a dead horse carcass. No wonder they were so poorly. No wonder it killed people. Like, it's, I can't imagine it. I can't actually imagine it. So how did the Victorians solve the problem of all this muck on their street? Well, they didn't really. <laughs> They couldn't solve it. Literally, it was impossible to pick them up, up quick enough. The council, however, did employ young boys aged between sort of 11 and 14 to remove the muck off of the streets. Now, back then, these would have been very poor boys living in the slums and they would have been paid absolute pittance, like, you know, very, very cheap labour. 
Um, boys back then wouldn't have been at school. I could say they were from families that were incredibly poor, so they would have been expected to go out and work. However, they weren't really old enough nor strong enough to work in like construction or on the dock. So these kind of jobs were best suited to them, sort of picking up the manure off the streets or helping chimney sweeps and that kind of thing. Um, often the lads that age did not want to work with the chimney sweeps. That was a job that really scared them and it was super dangerous as well because they could get stuck up at the chimneys and, you know, who likes to be in tight spaces and that was not a fun job. So quite often they liked picking up the manure. And you think, oh, well, that can't be that dangerous. But actually it was incredibly dangerous because they were trying to dodge the wheels of the cabs and carriages and omnibuses and the horses legs because they were literally trying to pick up the muck as soon as it fell because you know if you've got horses like it's easier if you pick it up quickly rather than let it you know bed down or whatever so um it was a really dangerous job and the cab drivers really couldn't care less about the young lads like they would happily just run them over if they were in their way they weren't going to stop you know if they had a passenger on board their cab and they wanted to get them from a to b as fast as possible the cab drivers were not going to stop for the young lads that ran out trying to pick up the horse manure in the road so it's an incredibly dangerous job and actually had some horrific accidents when they got caught by the wheels of the carriages or under the horse's legs i mean it doesn't bear thinking about does it and how come we didn't end up under nine feet of horse manure because of the motor car so in 1895 the very first motor car was imported into the uk and from then on slowly it built and built and built and of course as more motor cars hit the road less horses were needed which meant less manure on the road Thankfully, we didn't have the big crisis that they were predicting in 50 years' time where we'd all be literally drowning in horse manure. Thank goodness, because, I mean, that wouldn't have been much fun, would it? But, yeah. So, a big worry that actually suddenly pretty much went away within a few years because of the motor car. A very short history vlog, but I hope you enjoyed. I do think it's absolutely fascinating. Like, ah, oh, sometimes I wish I could just sort of jump back in time and just take a look at some of these scenes. It would have been absolutely incredible and... I mean, so many sad stories. I mean, Victorian age was such a tough era and so many people had it incredibly hard. And any time you sort of research what the horses went through back then, it is really sad. It's incredibly sad. You know, it's hard to believe what those horses went through and how hard they worked. But um, it's important to know about this history.